In this T's Math video, we have an example of an equation with fractions in it. Check out T's Math Live session number two. I did several examples of equations with fractions. And the big idea that I wanna get across to you is that if you're thinking about converting all these fractions to decimals, that is a valid approach, but sometimes that approach will not work because some of your fractions will not be nice decimals. Sure, three divided by two, 1.5, that's fine. Four over three, not a nice decimal. Eight over nine, not a nice decimal. So we have to have other approaches. Now, some of you may be thinking, okay, well, I'm going to add four thirds to both sides and then divide both sides by three halves. You're taking the typical two-step equation approach, which is totally fine, but I do see students try that and they will get their fraction rules mixed up, when to get common denominators, how to divide fractions. So hear me out. This is an approach that I'm going to show you. It always works. And our goal is to get rid of these fractions. And to get rid of our fractions, if we multiply both sides by a common denominator for all fractions, we can get rid of them. Now, there is technically an extra step in here if you are originally given parentheses in your equation, which we're not here. I'll show you that one later. As a matter of fact, check out live session number two. But here, no parentheses. Let's find a common denominator for all of our fractions. Two, three, and nine. 18 is going to be the one that I'm going to use here because that's the least common multiple, the least common denominator. And I said to multiply both sides by that common denominator. So we need to distribute the 18 to both of these terms, whether they're fractions or not, both of them are fractions, but no matter how many terms you have, you have to multiply both sides, all terms by the common denominator. Now grab your calculator, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways you can do this. Take 18 times three, that gives you 54, immediately divide by two, that will give you 27. So notice we have 27x. Let's repeat this, 18 times four, that's 72. Immediately divide by three, there's your 24. Do it again, 18 times eight is 144. Immediately divide by nine, that gives you 16. But that's not how I do it. Here's how I do it. I take 18 divided by two first, that gives me nine. Then I multiply by three, that gives me 27. I'm dodging the big numbers. Let's do it again, 18 divided by three is six. Six times four is 24, same thing. 18 divided by nine is two. Two times eight is 16, same thing. And look at this nice equation we have now. We have two steps left, and that first step is to add 24 to both sides so that we can cancel them out over here. Bring down that 27x. 16 plus 24 is 40. We got one more step. We need to get x by itself. Let's divide both sides by 27. 27's cancel over here. What do we have left? x equals 40 over 27, and this fraction will not simplify. And then you may try to divide 40 divided by 27. Sure, you're gonna get an ugly decimal. There's nothing wrong with leaving this answer like this. It's totally simplified. It's not a nice decimal. Let it be. X equals 40 over 27 is our answer. 